Hi, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, I'm going to take you through different deployment options that are available in Microsoft Azure in order to deploy web applications into Azure App Service. There are a number of deployment options that are available, but I'm touching upon some of the key ones. First one is zip or var file deployment. Basically, you can put your web application content into a zip file or a var file and deploy into Azure App Service. Similarly, you can able to deploy using FTP also. You have two types of credentials that you can use in order to FTP the content into Azure App Service. I'm going to take you through those credentials in the next slide. And the next one is content sync deployment using OneDrive and Dropbox. Basically, you will be creating a folder within OneDrive or Dropbox and any content in that folder will get synchronized into your Azure App Service. This will be mainly used if you have a static website and you want to make sure any changes you do to the content will be reflected using a content sync deployment. Then in that case, you can use OneDrive and Dropbox. By the way, OneDrive for business is not yet supported. It's only normal OneDrive that you can use for this content sync deployment. And the final one is deploying continuously using VSTS or GitHub. Most probably if you're working as part of your team, in a big IT company, this is the most common way that you will be using in order to deploy content into Azure App Service. So these are all the general deployment options. And in terms of credentials, in order to publish the content into Azure App Service, whenever you are using FTP or GitHub, there are two types of credentials that you can use. Let me take you through that. So first type of credential is user level credential. This is one set of credentials for the entire Azure account. So you can use these credentials in order to publish the content to any app service to which you have access to in Microsoft Azure. So this user level credentials is a very high level credentials at an account level using which you can deploy into any app service that you have access to under the tenant. And the second level credentials is app level credentials. These credentials are specific to each app. So you can use them in order to deploy to that app only. So in case if you want to share these credentials temporarily to somebody, then the right credentials to share is app level credentials. Okay. In the next lab, I'm going to show this to you where you can see this user level credentials and app level credentials. And the next important key concept is deployment slots. Deployment slots are basically live apps. They have their own endpoint. It is very difficult to explain deployment slots, but if I show it to you in Azure portal, you will understand much more better. So in the subsequent labs, I'm going to show you how to create deployment slots, how you can publish applications and all those stuff. But um, let me explain you briefly. When you deploy your web app or mobile app or API app, you will be able to deploy into a separate deployment slot instead of production slot. But these slots are supported only when you are using standard or premium app service plan tier. So why these deployment slots are required? Basically, you can able to create development deployment slot, testing deployment slot, staging deployment slot and production slot. And you can able to deploy different versions of the applications into these slots, test them before you publish into production. And also there is something called swapping. Once you publish a web application into a particular slot, you can swap that slot with production. Basically, first of all, publish an app into a staging slot and test it with four or five users. And once you are happy with it, then you can swap it with production slot. So whatever the content that is there in the staging slot will be moved into production, including the app content and configuration associated with that slot also. However, there are some of the configuration elements that stick to a slot that is very, very important for you to remember. So let me take you through that. Some configuration elements will follow the content across a swap, while other configuration elements will stay in the same slot after a swap also. This particular swapping, I'm going to show that to you in one of the demonstrations, which will make it more clear for you. But this is one of the key areas that you need to remember. There are some configuration elements that will be swapped when you swap two slots with each other, but there are some settings that will not be swapped. So let's go through that. The settings that are swapped are general setting. So for example, .NET Framework version, 
34 or 64 bit web socket setting and also the app setting you will add so basically any key value pairs that you added will get swapped however you can make app setting to stick to the slot so for example if you have a testing connection string and a production connection string then you don't want to swap them isn't it so in that case you can make the setting in such a way it will stick to the slot okay i'm going to show that to you in the subsequent labs exactly the same thing and also similarly connection string also you can configure to stick to a slot but handler mappings monitoring and diagnostic settings web jobs content all these things will get swapped when you swap two slots there are few settings that will not get swapped which are basically publishing endpoints custom domain names ssl certificates and bindings scale settings and web job schedulers so this is what about deployment slots okay so that's it for this lecture in this lecture i have taken you through different deployment options that are available in order to publish web applications into azure app service and also i briefly touched upon deployment slots i know some of these things might be confusing to you but bear with me in the subsequent labs i'm going to explain each one of them in detail by providing you different demonstrations so if you have some time join me in the next lab